In this video, my goal is to show you what this is all about. And yes, this is Desmos in 3D. If you want to learn about how I made Desmos work and display things in 3D, then have a look at the video in the top right right now. But for now, just know that the point of this diagram is to represent the sphere of radius one with this point here as the origin. This sphere is the sphere of right ascension and declination. The x-axis here is the definition of zero right ascension and right ascension increases going around this way anti-clockwise. Declination increases going up here towards the z-axis. And from here, declination is also going up here towards the z-axis. For now, I will disable the green curve and just focus on the purple curve. What this purple curve is showing is the path of the sun around the sky throughout the year. Since this is right ascension and declination, this is first removing the effects of the daily spin of the Earth and just looking at the effects of Earth's yearly orbit around the Sun. Because the orbit of the Earth is tilted compared to the Earth's rotation, if you look at the situation from the side, the path of the Sun in the sky appears to tilt by 23 degrees, which is exactly the tilt between the Earth's rotation and its orbit. My goal is to find a way to describe the right ascension and declination of the Sun given the current state. One important piece of information is to know how zero right ascension is defined. Zero right ascension is in fact defined as exactly this point. This is the vernal equinox, which happens around the 21st of March. And it's the time and place in the sky where the sun crosses the celestial equator, which is this XY curve, and rises upwards in declination. The other side is different because it goes down in declination and this happens in September. But this is March, this is June, this is September, and this is December. So one assumption we have to make is that the orbit of the Earth around the Sun is perfectly circular. And that's not exactly true, but it's close enough for our purposes. And assuming that's the case, the Sun will also appear to make a perfect circle around the sky. Even though the circle is tilted, the Sun still moves a constant angle every day. And so the easiest way to describe this curve is to parameterize this curve based on an angle going around the circle. And in this graph, I've called this parameter k. You can see all the equations here involve the parameter k. And k is the measure of the angle starting from zero here around this circle. And it's essentially the angle of the sun around the path that it travels throughout the year. So this purple curve is the correct curve. And I'll get into how to calculate the right ascension and declination for each k value on this circle. But what I want to show first is this incorrect guess at what I thought the correct right ascension and declination should be. It's written out here, what I've called old right ascension declination. This is what I originally assumed would be the correct answer. My logic was that the sun kind of rises upwards, reaches a maximum, then goes down, and everything feels very circular. And whenever there are circles, sines and cosines get involved. So I just assumed that the declination, as k increases, would be a perfect sign going up and down just scaled here by the maximum angle. And in this graph, I've called the maximum angle theta, and I can control the value of theta with this slide here. So the maximum of sine is one, and at the maximum, it gets multiplied by the value of theta and reaches this point here. So I thought that would produce this perfect circle, but it doesn't. What it produces instead is this green arc. And you can see the green arc is roughly equal to the purple correct circle. And in fact, as theta gets closer and closer to zero, the incorrect green curve actually approaches the correct purple circle. But as you saw at the start of the video, as the angle of theta increases to 90 degrees, the two gets further and further apart from each other. So the original reason I needed to calculate this function was because I was designing a sundial. And the value of theta is fixed in real life. It's fixed at 23 degrees. So as you can see, at 23 degrees, my mistake wasn't too big of a mistake. It's still a small difference between the two curves, but it's very small. However, it's less about the mistake in the result and more about the fact that I found the wrong underlying equation. So the rest of this video is about how to find the correct underlying equation. Hiding the green curve and just focusing on the purple circle for now. If I orient the camera so that we're lined up with the x-axis, for now just imagine any value of k along the purple circle. For every value of k, there's a point on the purple circle and you can draw a corresponding right angle triangle by dropping down a line to the celestial equator and then going back across to zero. 
The length of this line that drops down is the declination of the sun for this given value of k. And the length of this line across is the right ascension of the sun for the given value of k. So what we have is a right angle triangle where we know the value of the hypotenuse, which is the given value of k, but we have the two shorter sides being unknowns. This here is a right angle, and the only other piece of information we know is that this angle here is equal to theta. So now we can use the spherical law of sines, which looks like this. It's very similar to the normal law of sines. The only difference is that instead of dividing by the length, you divide by the sine of the length. And it does make sense to take the sines and cosines of lengths on the surface of a sphere, because on a sphere of radius one, the lengths of arcs correspond to the angles at the centers. So calling the length of the declination here d, we know that sine d over sine theta equals sine k over sine of 90. And rearranging that, we can get the value of d. Now that we have the length of k and the value of d, we can just make use of the spherical Pythagorean theorem to find the value of the right ascension. And combining both, we have the declination and right ascension of any point that the sun could be at. Here's what the declination turns out to look like. It's a function of theta and k. And here's what the right ascension turns out to look like. It is a function of the declination and k. And lastly, instead of looking at these curves on the surface of a sphere, we can enable the grids and axes in Desmos and look at the graphs of what I assume to be a pure cosine versus the actual graphs of the right ascension and declination. As I increase theta, the blue curve stays as a pure cosine, but the purple curve changes and deforms in shape. In fact, this purple curve is essentially a great circle converted onto a rectangle. And so this purple curve is identical to those maps you see that show the boundary between day and night. And it's also identical to maps that show flight paths which appear to be curved, but which are actually straight lines on the surface of the globe. So that's all I have for you today. If you want to see more videos about spherical geometry, have a look at some that are on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.